We will discuss a solution battery, actual positive harm and previous positive harm under section 28 and uh, section 18. So the difference between what is assault and what is battery. Assault and battery are two separate offences. And the maximum penalty for you know, both of them is six months imprisonment um, under Section 39 of the Criminal Justice Act. It is important to remember that unlike the other offences uh, against the person, which are set out under Offences Against the Persons Act, this offence, uh, assault, as well as battery, they can be found in a criminal justice act. So the statute is different for it, and make sure you remember it for the exam. Applicable case DPP versus Little. Assault is committed where the defendant causes the victim to apprehend immediate and lawful personal violence. As you can see, there is no need for violence to actually take place as long as the person, the victim, apprehends things that immediate unlawful violence will be inflicted upon him. How immediate must this threat be? Can words alone be an assault? The defendant um, in Ireland made several silent phone calls over a number of weeks to fix him and consequently the defendant was charged with um, section 47 the court found that for the assault, the defendant does not need to make any physical contact with the victim. Therefore, actus res of assault will be satisfied as soon as the defendant causes the victim to apprehend or believe that victim is about to suffer some personal violence. So some personal violence will be enough to satisfy the criteria of, um, of assault. On the contrary, battery is different from assault in, in terms that the touching here is necessary. There has to be some kind of a touch from the defendant to, to the victim. The maximum penalty for battery as well as assault is the same at six months imprisonment. And the statute is the same as well, section 39 of the Criminal Justice Act. I just raised the infliction of unlawful personal force by one person upon another. This includes contact, whereas the assault doesn't. It can be through objects. It doesn't have to be skin-to-skin -skin contact. It can be through, through objects like clothes. And mens rea, uh, intention or recklessness as to the infliction of unlawful personal force. So it doesn't have to be the intention. The defendant doesn't have to intend uh, to inflict um, um, unlawful personal violence, but even recklessness will, will be enough to find liability under battery. Actual bodily harm is a bit more serious offence and um, it's uh, set out under section 47 of the Offences Against the Persons Act. So the act here is different. Assault and battery are found under Criminal Justice Act, whereas actual bodily harm is set out in Offences Against the Persons Act, 1861, as well as the DBH. The maximum sentence for assault occasioning actual bodily harm is five years imprisonment. And examples of the ABH includes a bruise or a minor grace. As you can see, it's actual or more serious. Serious bodily harm is dealt with under section 20 and 18 of Offences Against the Persons Act. Hatches race of ABH is an assault or battery that causes actual body harm. So the base offence is assault or battery, but the outcome here is different. So if um, the outcome was something very minor, then most likely it would be a battery. But if a personal violence that resulted in more serious um, consequences, such as bruise or minor graze, then most likely it would be actual bodily harm rather than battery. So it depends on, on the result. Actual bodily harm is defined as any heart or injury calculated to interfere with 
health or comfort. So the outcome of the unlawful personal violence should interfere with the victim's health or comfort. The harm or injury does not need to be serious or permanent. Instead, it must be more trifling, trivial and trifling for it to be heavy edge. If it's more serious or permanent, then more appropriate heading of the offence will be grievous bodily harm or serious bodily harm um, and under section 20 and 18 of the Offences Against the Persons Act. Bodily harm can include psychiatric harm as well. It doesn't have to be physical injury. Chen Fook was the case where this was recognised. Here, a student was interrogated by the defendant after the defendant's fiancé's engagement ring went missing. Moreover, the victim was locked up by the defendant and was threatened with violence if the ring was not returned. The issue here was whether the defendant was liable for causing assault occasioning the actual bodily harm under Section 47 of the Offence Against the Persons Act 1861. And the outcome was that the defendant was, um, was convicted by the court. The conviction was quashed, but the principle still stands that um, psychiatric harm would also qualify for ADH. The mens rea for section 47 is the same as assault or battery. So the base offence of ADH under section 47 is assault or battery, but the outcome is more serious than one of assault or battery. The result, the, uh, what has happened to the victim is, is more serious. The, the damage, physical or even psychiatric. But the mens rea can be absolutely the same, intention or recklessness to cause some body harm. Previous bodily harm under section 20 is more serious offence than actual bodily harm under section 47. In the problem question, this uh, this um, topic often comes up on the exam, on, on criminal law exams as a problem question. And if you can see on the facts that the, the outcome of uh, the offence, but what has happened to the victim is more serious than minor bruise or minor discomfort to the health of the victim, it's, if it's more than that, if it's more serious harm, then you should have a look at serious bodily harm offence under section 20 and 18, rather than section 47. However, you can say that if the court takes the view that the, the, the um, physical or mental um, injury that has happened to the victim is more trivial, uh, than section 47 applies. So there is no one answer in law. The point is that you may have, you will always have many possible answers. And in a problem question, what you need to do is to identify all possible outcomes that can happen if this problem, uh, this, if this case go to the court and what will be possible decision. What, possible view that a court may take on the given facts. All the applicable law has to be there and you have to uh, provide good analysis that shows that you understand uh, very well what are the differences between the, between the different offences under OAPA as well as Criminal Justice Act and apply to the facts of the case accordingly. Section 20, maliciously wounding or inflicting previous body harm. Well, the wording is a bit outdated because this is 19th century statute. There has been many suggestions by the Law Commission to update the statute, uh, to um, have a law reform at least to update the wording, but we, we still apply 1861 Act. The maximum sentence for maliciously wounding or inflicting previous body harm is five years imprisonment. A wound means a break of the skin. However, under this section, a serious wound is permanent disability, broken bones, or a serious psychiatric injury. At the stress of 
This offence is any act that causes a wound or grievous bodily harm. The case that applies um, on this offence is Eisenhower, where the court held that the defendant was not guilty of causing wounding to victim under section 20, as there was no break of the scheme. So the scheme layer has to be broken in order for this offence to apply. A mere scratch, if it's a mere scratch, then more appropriate heading will be section 47. Section 47 will most likely apply rather than section 20 because section 20 is more serious offence than section 47. So as you, when you see your problem question, if you think that what has happened to the victim is just a mere scratch uh, and uh, there is no serious damage to the skin, then you should apply section 47. Mens rea of section 20 is intention or recklessness as to causing some harm. So it doesn't have to be intentional recklessness to cause serious bodily harm, just some harm. Previous bodily harm under section 18 is where the intention comes. So in, for this offence, section 18 um, offence, there has to be intention to cause serious bodily harm. Wounding or causing grievous bodily harm with intent. And because of the intention, uh, the maximum sentence here increases. The maximum sentence is life imprisonment. The access race under section 18 is the same as section 20. It differs on mens rea. The mens rea in, for section 18 is intention to cause serious bodily harm. Whosoever shall unlawfully and maliciously by any means whatsoever wound or cause grievous bodily harm to a person with intent to do some grievous bodily harm to any person or with intent to resist to prevent the lawful apprehension or detainer of any person shall be guilty of an offence. So as long as there is intention to cause um, serious harm, then section 18 will apply. It is very important that in a problem question, you should also uh, have a look at the defences after, after identifying the relevant defence. The defences are uh, consent, uh, surgery, body modification, sport and horseplay. Now, the first uh, defence is consent, which means that the victim may consent to the offence against the person. So in, in, in other words, if you are getting a tattoo, you are consenting to the harm that will be inflicted on your skin. That's a consent and that's a defense. If you are getting a surgery, you're consenting to what will um, happen, the, the, the breaking of the skin, then uh, that's a full defense and uh, the doctor will not be liable on the Offensive Civil Persons Act. Body modifications like piercing is also a full defense. In case of sport, there are some violent sports like boxing. That also is a full defense because we consent um, to engage in sports activities and horseplay. It's also a full defense. So make sure that in the problem question, you discuss if any of the four defenses apply to, or apply to the facts presented. How to approach a problem question on offenses against the Persons Act? You need to identify which one of the offences against persons act is the most applicable on the given facts. You need to discuss actus res and mens rea of all possible OAPA offences that may apply to the given facts. You need to discuss, discuss which offence is the most applicable and why, and consider if any of the defences apply. If you have successfully gone through all the suggested steps and identified all the relevant case law and applied it to the facts of the case and provided relevant analysis, you will be able to get a high grade. Now I would like to give you a little bit more information about how we can help. At Simple Studying, we have top students and graduates who create content and we present this content in the simplest way possible to help all the law students to get high grades. We have simple notes, 
example essays, tutorial videos, quizzes, and uh, flashcards. If the resources are not enough, you're more than welcome to get one-to-one -one tutoring sessions with us. It can be very useful, especially in the exam season. If you need to prepare for your exams, we can help you with that. If you need to plan your assignment, we can help you with that. Or if you need to just generally improve your, your legal writing skills or you need any additional guidance on anything you may be struggling with in your legal studies, tutoring session is very helpful. We have already helped thousands of law students get high grades, as you can see on the reviews, and I would love you to be our next student to get high grades. Join Simple Study now, and you can also join our study groups on WhatsApp via, through the link below. Thank you very much for attending this session.